world Enough to seek your kingdom first Beyond the barren place Beyond the ocean waves When I walk through the water I won't be overcome When I go through the river I will not be drowned My God will make a way So I am not afraid You keep the promises you made So I will not lose heart Here I will lift my arms It's hard to sing into the night My praise will call the sun to rise My praise will call the sun to rise Declare the battle won Declare that it is done When I walk through the waters I won't be over Declaring victory, my God will make a way, so I am not afraid. You keep the promises you made. There isn't one that is delayed, so I will not lose heart. Here I God that we serve. Amen. So thankful uh, for his presence and what we can feel. Uh, some people don't believe in going to church on Wednesday night, uh, but I've been been raised uh, in church all my life. And uh, Wednesday, and every time the doors are open, uh, we go to the house of God. And uh, I'll be honest with you, there's been times where I've come in and I kind of took for granted uh, the service. How many of you has ever fell asleep in a Bible study? <laughs> I, I fell asleep a bunch of times in a Bible study as a child. 
um, we'd have Bible quiz night, and uh, I lost a lot. I lost a lot. Um, but I'm thankful for elders that took the time to establish uh, a time for us to come together. And they said it's important enough to us that we're going to come multiple times a week into the presence of God. Even when they would go to work and then they'd get off work and they would they would get off and, and go get ready and they'd go straight to the to the house of God and they had just such a hunger uh, for the things of God and I say all of that because I believe that I we are a church and a congregation uh, that has a hunger for the things of God as well. All of you have probably worked today or done some form of labor, and you still made it to the house of God on a Wednesday night. You still took the time to get ready. You still took the time to get the kids ready. You still took the time to make it to pre-service prayer. You took the time to make it here for worship. You're not late. You're on time. I believe that God honors that, and I believe that God is going to move in this service because we've come expecting Him to be here. Amen. Do you believe that with me tonight? That Jesus is here and He's wanting to work in our service tonight. He's wanting to do something. I believe that. I believe that. Welcome to Iuka First United Pentecostal Church. If this is your first time with us, my name is Andrew. It's nice. I hope I get to meet you. Uh, but we're glad that you took the time to be here. If you're tuning in online, thank you for taking the time to watch online. And we hope that you can stick with us for the entire service. Amen. We're going to have a good time in the Holy Ghost tonight. Amen. Let's go to prayer together in this service. Would you lift your hands and just lift your voice with me? God, I thank you for every person that's here. I thank you, God, for the souls that uh, are watching online. God, I thank you uh, that you would allow us to gather in this house on a Wednesday night. Lord, I pray that you would have your will and have your way in this service. Do what you want to do, God. Lord, I pray from the beginning to the end. I know it's a Wednesday night, but God, there's a hunger in me. Oh, that we go beyond just the mediocre and beyond the casual of a routine week service after service. Lord, I pray that you would interrupt this service with a prophetic. I pray that you would interrupt this service with a powerful presence of your spirit, God. Uh, oh, that we could leave here differently, that we could leave here changed. Uh, Monday night, there was a prophetic word that went forth from you from the mouth of a man here god i thank you i praise you for what you're going to do in this service we love you jesus uh, we pray all these things in your name amen if you would find somebody next to you find somebody across the sanctuary shake their hand hug their neck let them know you're glad to see them today
Can somebody give the Lord praise in this house tonight? He's worthy of the glory. He's worthy of the honor. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We are thankful for the revival culture of the church. This is not something that should be out of norm, but something that should be service after service. We're so thankful for Robert. He's been in Bible study, saw his need to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. We're going to baptize Robert tonight in the all-saving name of Jesus. Scripture said, For neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name given among men under heaven whereby we must be saved. We are thankful to, tonight for Robert. Would you lift your hands as we pray tonight for Robert, wonderful Savior. Thank you for the privilege to join together this night. We celebrate, God, this work that you've begun in Robert. I pray and plead your blood over his mind, heart, and spirit. I pray, God, that you lead him in the paths of righteousness for your name's sake. We love him. We thank you, God, for all that you've done and all that you're doing. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Robert Price, on uh, behalf of seeing your need to be baptized, I baptize you now in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins. One God, one name, Jesus. Oh, somebody ought to be Jesus, excited. One Hallelujah. God. thankful for another soul baptized in Jesus name as pastor said that should not be something that is out of the norm and I believe this is something that's going to keep continuing to grow each and every single service we're going to see multiple souls baptized in Jesus name service after service we're going to see more souls receiving the gift of Holy Ghost service after service anybody else believe that we're going to see that We're going to go ahead right now and call for our ushers. We appreciate everyone who is faithful in giving, who is faithful in their tithes and offering. And I know I say this and I'll say it again, but we're not just investing in making sure the air conditioning stays on during the summer, the heat stays on during the winter, that the lights stay on so that we can have a good service. And I know we've had those services where the lights go out and we still have a fantastic service, but the lights are a great thing. And but we're not just investing in that, we're making sure that we're investing in souls, that we're investing in the kingdom and looking forward to seeing what God's going to do through each and every person giving. We've got our prayer, and as I put it on the screen, I know we've all been blessed by this, so let's pray this prayer together. Upon the authority of your word, I have given and it shall be given unto me, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a giver. I bring my tithes and offering today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked and the curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing, there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and incomes, 
rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished and royalties received, my whole family saved and walking with God, perfect health and abundance to walk in divine favor and blessing. I am blessed going in and I am blessed going out. All that I do shall prosper in Jesus' name. Amen. Worship with the praise team as you come to give. that with our praise right now in this house 
Oh, come on, can we lift our voice and magnify him in this place right now? Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. While you remain standing, what a privilege it is to be back in service again tonight. Am you excited about being in the presence of the Lord? Amen. So proud of Robert. Excited about potential God is placing in his life tonight. Really are. And uh, not only that, He's got family that was connected in by uh, Facebook Live while we was back there in the back. Matter of fact, I'm so proud of Brother Anthony. He's probably even tuned into service tonight. But with that, uh, while he's been in this program where he's at, he's been connected to the Bessemer Church. And I found out tonight he's possibly got 11 visitors going with him to church. Amen. And I'm very proud of Anthony. Great job he's doing. He's looking forward to being home in a few days. But he's very excited about these family members that's getting baptized. This is only the beginning, folks. We got more to come. Matter of fact, we got some more this weekend potentially going to be baptized. You be in prayer about that. I'm looking forward to God filling all of these folks with the Holy Ghost. While you remain standing, we are blessed to have great ministry in this church. I felt to ask Brother McDonald some time ago, and uh, with that, I forgot it twice. And finally, I thought, I'm going to do it right now while I'm thinking about it, or I'll forget it again. Uh, but uh, he conceded to that idea, and he's here to preach tonight. How many of you help him for a few minutes tonight, William? God bless you, Brother McDonald. Praise the Lord. I mean, he's excited to be in God's house tonight. Amen. The Lord is such a marvelous God. He's powerful. He's worthy of everything we could ever offer Him. Hallelujah. Um, I would like to start tonight and say I give honor to my pastor, to my first lady, thankful for my covering in my world. I give honor to my beautiful wife, and now I can say my beautiful daughter. <laughs> I give honor to every minister here tonight. And tonight I know for a fact that I've heard from God and He's given me direction for tonight's service. I didn't come to play games with anyone, but I came to preach what the Lord has placed in my spirit for some time now. I was praying the other day, and this is what the Lord said, you will preach about living in victory. My people need to know what it's like to win some battles and to know how to not fall back into the trap of the enemy every day. Living in victory is critical. And the Lord said, I've let you do it so you can show others the keys of living in victory every day. Turning quickly to the word of the Lord, I got three portions of scripture that I'd like to bring to your hearing tonight. The first is Isaiah 59 and 19. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall raise up a standard against him. 2 Corinthians 10 verses 3 through 6. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Ephesians 6, verses 10 through 20. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girded about with truth. This is the armor of God. We need to put this on every day. Stand, therefore, having your loins girded about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, take in the shield of faith, wherewith you may be able to uh, quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, 
and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. For which I, I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. If you would, lift your hands for a moment. Lord, we love you tonight. We're thankful, God, for your presence that's in this place. We're thankful, God, for your word, God, that's gone forth. I pray tonight, God, that your anointing would flow through your servant. God, I'm nothing but flesh, oh God. But I pray, God, that you would flow through me tonight, God, to where I could preach with us, saith the Lord. Pray, God, that every heart would be pricked tonight by the word. God, that we could, that your word would be confirmed tonight with signs following. We thank you tonight, God, and we clap our hands and worship you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You may be seated. I would like to start out by the onsing and the onset of this service. As a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ, it's not the will of God that we lose every battle that we face. Tonight, with the help of the Holy Ghost, I'm going to do my very best to preach to you precious people and tell us how we can get some victory in our world. How many like the idea of having victory? Amen. The definition of a stronghold is, in, in the Greek, it's akarama, and it literally means a castle or a fortress. I like to say men, mental health is a real battle. Most of the time, this is the number one way or tactic that the enemy will use against us as the church of the living God. Daniel chapter 7 and verse 25, And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and to think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. This word wear out, it literally means belaw in Hebrew, and it's, it means a literal, a mental sense. It means to afflict. The enemy's going to afflict us in our minds. And this, um, this word, it says that he's going to speak blasphemous words against God. We are seeing this all around us today. Every time you turn around, something is changing in our government. The Antichrist spirit is working in this world and trying its best to deceive as many people as it can. But tonight, with the help of God, I'm going to give you some tools to help you have victory in your thought life. God has given me victory in my thought life, and tonight I'm going to relay to you the details and the strategies that the Lord wants you precious people to have. Victory must be a decision. You have got to wake up in your mind each and every day and say, Today, I choose victory. We have come to the point and the realization that we do not have to wake up and be defeated. We have to wake up today and say, today is the day that I'm going to leave with victory in my mind. I'm going to leave victory in my health. I'm going to leave for victory in my finances. I'm going to leave with victory over addiction. I'm going to leave with victory over worldliness. Whatever it is that you may be facing today, you can leave with victory. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 3 and verse 37. No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he will first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house. There's one thing about the devil. He's very clever. He's very sneaky, and he's very subtle. He doesn't come to you at your strongest moments. He will usually come to you at your weakest moments. 2 Corinthians 2 and 11, it says, Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Anyone that tells you the devil is stupid has no idea what they're talking about. He's a lot of things. He's perverted. He's deceitful. He's cunning. He's crafty. And he's a lot of other things, but stupid is not one of them. Let's learn a little bit about tonight about our adversary. Some would say he is God's adversary, but God has no equal. No one could even compare it to the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus was the creator. The devil, Satan, the enemy, whatever you want to call him, he was a creation by the creator, so therefore is subject to whatever the creator has to say. 
Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 11 through 19 says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation unto the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom, perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in the Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardis, the topaz, the diamond, the barrel, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, the carbuncle, the gold, and the workmanship of thy taverns, and thy pipes were prepared in thee the day that thou wast created. Thou art the anointed cherub. This is talking about Lucifer. The anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled thee the midst of thee with violence. Thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by the reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that thou may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquity, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore, I will bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee that's talking about hell and I will bring to thee to ashes upon the earth and the sight of all behold thee all they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee that thou shall be a terror and never shalt thou be any more the first thing you have to see is full of wisdom not stupid but he's full of wisdom he studies humans for a living he sees areas in our world where we struggle with and that's usually where he'll begin to tempt us he, he does see the areas that you do struggle with, and he will tempt you. If you have a gossip problem, he's going to let you scroll on Facebook all hours of the day and let you see everyone's business, so all you can do is talk about them. If, if you don't want individuals to talk bad about you, please don't put nothing crazy on Facebook. That's just attention-seeking. I'll say this, if all you have to do is sit around and gossip about people, you probably have some major insecurities in your world. Remember this statement, when you have one finger pointed at someone, you've always got three pointing back at yourself. If you struggle with pornography, it's about to get real. If, if you struggle with pornography, because I guarantee I know there's individuals in here tonight who do, he's always going to fill your thoughts with perverted thoughts. He makes you think sex, about sexual things to put you into temptation to make you fall back into the trap of pornography. I found some research from the recoveryvillage.com. It says pornography addiction rates are rising thanks to the easy access to porn on the Internet. Many conditions co-occur with porn addiction, including anxiety, depression, social anxiety, and substance use disorders. Around 35%, this is, listen to this statistic. Around 35% of all internet downloads are pornographic. As the internet grows exponentially, the amount of porn on internet begins to swell. However, the amount of pornography available may not be as much of a problem as it is of its ease of access. This ease of access means that intentional or inadvertent exposure to porn is increasing among minors. Exposure to porn as a child or a teenager can lead to unhealthy ideas about sexual relationships. The Internet is not the only source of pornography on the market. A study conducted in 2006 found that 84% of people between the ages of 18 and 49 had watched pornographic films, either rented or on television. Another 82% had viewed pornographic magazines. That was in 2006. There's no telling what the statistics are like now. Many studies have been conducted on online pornography use. These have revealed some interesting facts. 40 million U.S. adults, listen, 40 million, I think there's 360 million people that live in America. Over 40 million U.S. adults regularly visit pornographic websites. 10% of all U.S. adults, that's 10%, so that's... I can't do math that quick. 
10% of U.S. adults having an addiction to Internet pornography. 17% of all women struggle with porn addiction. 20% of men and 13% of women access porn while they're at work. 70% of women admit to keep their cyber activities secret. And one of every three visitors of all adult websites is a woman. It's not just men anymore. This is all research about hard pornography, this explicit stuff. What about soft pornography? Soft pornography is, is pornography that shows or describes sex, but not very violent or unpleasant. And it's not in a very detailed way. I'm going to hit on something that's very unpopular. Social media, YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, television, Netflix, Hulu, video games. I must say this before I go on. Our church uses a lot of these platforms so that individuals can have a chance to see some light in a dark world. But I would like to ask this question. How many like to dig in trash? Trash stinks. You get nasty when you dig through trash. There may be some good things in the trash, but you have to get pretty dirty and pretty nasty and pretty stinky when you start playing with filth. That's what a lot of these platforms are, just a bunch of trash cans full of garbage with very little good. Most pornography is viewed from a smartphone. I know what people will say. How can I keep up with everything going on without Facebook? Well, before February 4th, 2004, people communicated like normal people. Face-to-face, -face, cell phones after 1983. They even wrote letters to each other back then. Don't get me wrong. I'm thankful for the advancements in technology, but it has made us the smartest generation to ever live, but it's also made us one of the dumbest generations that's ever lived. And it's also made us one of the laziest generations. It's a fake world. The virtual world is a fake world. There is a real world out here, and the virtual world, I personally believe, is a substitute for Satan to keep you out of the spirit world. I heard something a minister said one time. He said, entertainment doesn't keep you from having the desire to consecrate. It keeps you distracted from following through. Soft pornography, sadly, is something that a lot of us see on a daily basis. Men... We have to keep a guard upon our eyes. There is too many scantily clad women walking around. Women have tremendous power over the atmosphere of a room. You don't believe me? Let a half-naked woman walk into the room with a bunch of ungodly men. Every head would turn and take a look at what this world would call beautiful. That's why women have to be very careful and um, about their outward holiness because they are a direct reflection of the church of the living God. The women are the image of the church. That's why it's very important for women to be modest. First Timothy 2, verses 8 and 9, I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. And like men are also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array. Remember, men, it's our duty to lift up holy hands and pray everywhere without wrath or doubting. That's two things that a lot of men struggle with. Remember this statement. Women change the atmosphere by the way they look. Men change the atmosphere by the words they say. A lot of these platforms are full of soft pornography. And there's a lot of individuals that are addicted to their smartphone. According to psychsguide.com, it talks about the behavioral disorders and cell phone addiction. It turns the cell phone, people turn the cell phone on when experiencing unwanted feelings such as anxiety and depression. Excessive use characterized by loss of sense of time. It has put relationships or jobs at risk due to excessive cell phone use. It's, it's, it's a tolerance thing now. The need for the newest cell phone, more applications or increased use. Withdrawal when cell phones or network is unreachable. Anger, tension, depression, irritability, restlessness. These are some symptoms of individuals who are addicted to their cell phones. Most experts would say that pornography 
is just as addictive as crack cocaine. I would say that's true because your body releases endorphins. And an endorphin or a group of hormones secreted with the brain and the nervous system having a number of psychological functions. They are peptides which activate the body's opiate receptors causing an anglistic effect. There is a lie that comes with pornography. It says you're the only one who deals with it. So it tries to keep you bound. I would say there's many in this room tonight, and you're looking at one, who's been delivered from pornography. But there's some in this room tonight who may be bound by pornography. And you're wanting deliverance so bad, you can taste it. I'm going to tell you how you can get some victory tonight. If you want to have victory where you never have to deal with pornography again, you can be free from the stronghold if you want to be. You just got to make up in your mind that you do want to be free and you got to have an accountability partner that you will not lie to. Amen. Let's talk about worldly music. It talks about the enemy. The workmanship of thy tabernacles and thy pipes was prepared in thee the day that thou wast created. Here's another thing to remember about your enemy it's not that he used to be the leader of music it's the fact he was music when he moved or he spoke you heard music flowing out of him why do you think music is so powerful it's one it's the one thing that satan brought down to the world with him when he fell from heaven I'm baffled or perplexed when I see people in church who are supposed to be redeemed by the same God that redeemed me, but they don't know the words to any song in here, but they know the words to every song in the world. Let's take a look at worldly music, rap music. These are some characteristics of this music. Sex, money, drugs, materialism, abuse of women, violence, country music. Sex, alcohol, mistreatment of women, adultery, violence, fornication, rock music, rebellion. Rebellion is the same sin as witchcraft. Demonic worship, violence, cutting yourselves, depression, adulterous affairs, sex, alcohol, and drugs. There's a lot of things these music have in common. They all pertain to the works of the flesh. Galatians 5, 19 through 21 says, Now the works of the flesh are made manifest. That means it's right there in front of you. Listen to this. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like this, of which I tell you before, as have I told you in time past, that they which do these such things shall not, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. If you're partaking in any of those things, you will not go to heaven, according to that scripture. Romans 8, 5 through 8 says, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace because the carnal mind is enmity against God. Therefore, it is, excuse me, it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh can't please God. This word enmity in the Greek, it's akathrak. I can't speak Greek. <laughs> it, it means literally hatred. When you are carnally minded, God literally hates the fact that your mind is carnal. Worldly music is literally songs written by the devil. So when an individual is singing every song on the radio, every song on Spotify and Pandora and YouTube and TikTok, they are worshiping the devil. Praise God. <laughs> now I want to get into how to live in victory every day. Keep... If, if you have notes, I would say write these down. These are going to be four key points on how to live in victory every day. Number one is submission to your pastor, spiritual authority. 
Number two, praise and worship. Number three is fasting. Number four is daily prayer. I'm going to go through them again. Number one is submission. Number two is praise and worship. Number three is fasting. Number four is daily prayer. Submission. What is submission? Submission is the act or fact of accepting or yielding to a superior force or to the will of or authority of another person. Anyone can tell you what a definition is, but to truly understand what submission is, you have to be in certain, cer certain instances in your life where this subject is prevalent, prevalent. So I say again, what is submission? Submission is two words put together. The first is sub. Sub is a prefix, and it means beneath, below, at a low rank or secondary level. Mission is a strongly felt aim, ambition, or calling. When you put these two words together, it means you are beneath or below your ambitions or your calling. In other words, you put yourself below an individual that you are subjected to. Submission to me is a very deep subject because it shows your true commitment level to your man of God. It also shows your commitment to prayer. It also shows your commitment to the Word of God, and it shows your commitment to God Himself. What really taught me submission was the people I surrounded myself when I moved to Ayuka. They were submitted to their pastor. I knew what submission was, but hadn't really seen it a lot until I moved here. It taught me the importance of submission. It also taught me the importance of being covered. I really developed a real prayer life. I started fasting more. I developed a love for God's Word. I started living a consecrated and a submitted life. I developed an ear to hear the voice of God in discernment. I'm nowhere a master or the best example, but I can tell you that living a submitted life, it gives you peace in your soul to know that your spirit is right with God. For any child of God to be successful in their walk with God, they must have submission in their world. Submission, I believe, is one of the core building blocks for our walk with God and to continue living in victory every day. From past experiences, I can honestly say I am blessed to live a submitted life. Submission will also teach you some things about yourself. Submission will give you humility like nothing else. Psalms 35, verse 13. But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled my soul with fasting, and my prayer returned into my own bosom. Walking under submission not only helps you in your spiritual walk, but it also gives you authority over demonic, every demonic force of hell that they will throw at you. Remember this thought. Submission will unlock the divine favor of God in your life. Key point number two, praise and worship. The word worship occurs in your Bible 188 times. The word praise occurs in our Bible 259 times. I'd say that's a pretty big deal. It's amazing the first place that, they, that worship occurred. Genesis 22 and 5, And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. This amazes me. Up to this point in the Bible, no one had been raised from the dead. But Abraham had enough faith that he and his boy, when they went to worship, he was supposed to kill his son. But he was going to be raised back from the dead because he said they was going to come back. The definition of worship is a feeling or expression or reverence an adoration for a deity. Uh, praise and worship are two different things. You've probably heard the following descriptions drawing a distinction between praise and worship. Praise is about God. Worship is to God. Praise is opening up. Worship is entering in. Praise is boldly declaring. Worship is humbly bowing in the presence of God. Praise applauds what God has done but worship is honoring God for who He is. The greatest example in the entire Bible, I would say, would be King David. If I had to pick my favorite Bible character, I think it would be King David. 
because he's the most relatable to me. First Samuel 13, 13 and 14 says, And Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly, that thou hast kept the command that has not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee, for now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. But now the Lord shall not continue. The Lord hath sought him a man after his own heart. And the Lord hath commanded him to be captain over his people, because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. The story of the kingdom being stripped away from Saul is a very long story. But this was a point where Saul was disobedient. It's a very long process for the kingdom of God being, or the kingdom of Israel being handed to David. It's an amazing place. It's amazing the place that Samuel found David. He was in the field. When he found Saul, he was among the stuff. 1 Samuel 16, 11 through 13. Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here all thy children? And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. And he said unto Jesse, Send, fetch him, for we will not sit till he come. And he sent and brought him in. And now he was a ruddy, and with all a beautiful countenance, and, God, and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, and anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. David, when, when, when David did uh, get anointed, there was, a, there was an evil spirit that come to Saul. And Saul had asked for David to come and play the harp. So the evil spirit departed from him. And he was all, it, it, this is interesting. I saw this the other day. David became Saul's armor bearer. I just saw that for the first time, and that, that interested me. So David knew what it was like to submit himself unto the king. David was anointed, but he knew the value of submission. David knew how to keep a right spirit during the point of transition in his world. Time will not allow me to tell you the whole story, but I encourage on your own time to read the story of the transition between David and Saul and David. Some time ago, the Lord began to deal with me and some, or talk to me about something in prayer. Now, I'm not a smart guy, so I knew this was a big word when he said it. But he said, modus operandi. And I'm like, what? So I got to look at what the definition of that was. It says a particular way or a method of doing something, especially one that is a career characteristic or well-established. Then he began to, to go to the scriptures. I don't have time to read all the scriptures, uh, but it was to the point where they was trying to restore the ark of the Lord back into Israel. They got it from the Philistines. And Yuza, he put his hand on the ark whenever it got a little shaky. And the Lord killed him right then and there. So they parked it at the house of Obed-Edom, and the Lord blessed their house for three months. And he told King David, the Lord had blessed the house of Obed-Edom. And so they went again and got the ark of, uh, they got the ark and brought it back. And every six paces, David worshiped and sacrificed oxen and fatlings. And David danced before the Lord with all of his might. And David was girded with a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought the ark of the Lord with shouting and the sound of a trumpet. He further be this is what the Lord further began to tell me. When it was time for my glory to come back to Israel, David brought the ark back. We have to be careful in the way that our approach is to the presence of God. Oftentimes, many individuals like Yuza can be careless with the presence of the Lord. God was not happy when Yuza put his hand forth on his ark and God killed him right then and there. If we are not careful, we can come to the place where things can become a little shaky in our world and we can be careless with the presence of God. Every time that we get the opportunity to be in the presence of God, it should be an honor and a privilege. We have to revere the presence of God. 
And as David was was bringing, um, was bringing the 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 was worshiping and and doing all of the the offerings unto the Lord, his wife was standing in a window looking. I don't have time to read all these scriptures, but but she began to look at him, and and she said, "Let me find where she said." How glorious was the king of Israel today who uncovered himself today in the eyes of his handmaids and of his servants as one of the vain fellows shamelessly uncovering himself. And David said unto Michael, It was before the Lord which chose me before thy father and before all his house to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord over Israel. Therefore will I play before the Lord. And I will yet be more vile than thus, and will be base in my own sight, and in my maidservants, which thou hast spoken of, and them shall I had in honor. Listen to this. Wherefore Michael, the daughter of Saul, had, had no child until the day of her death. David danced before the Lord with all of his might, because he knew that he had messed up beforehand. He wanted to make sure he did it right this time. Michael, or David's wife, Michael, the daughter of his predecessor, King Saul, looked down upon her husband for giving everything he had to the Lord that day. The Bible makes it very plain that Michael was barren and she could no longer produce king's kids because of her lack of reverence to the Lord. And she chose to fold her arms and talk down to her husband for worshiping the Lord. I, I have a problem with Michaels. How can we call ourselves apostolic if we can't worship the Lord with all of our might? Some people have it in their mind, oh, I can just dress this way. And that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> There's more to being apostolic than, than the way that we dress. We have to be holy inside and outside. But we also have to worship and praise the Lord with all of our might. God deserves our very best. And I would ask for the next 30 seconds, could you give everything that you got to the Lord? Could you give him everything that you got? 30, 29, 28, 27, 26, 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20. 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Key point number three, fasting. I'm not going to be very much longer. Fasting. Mark 17, 21. Howbeit this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. Job 23 and 12. Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Psalms 109 and 24. My knees are weak through fasting, and my flesh faileth of fatness. Fasting is something our flesh hates to do because I don't know about y'all, but I love food. I'm, I, you don't get this big overnight. <laughs> it takes a lot of hard work and practice. You have to have food to survive, amen? It's the, it, fasting is probably one of the hardest things to do. All throughout Scripture, you will find this principle, and fasting is powerful. Fasting gives you authority and power over every demonic spirit. It also weakens your flesh. If you're fasting like you should be, you will know how to put your flesh under subjection and know how to keep it from rising up. I will say I fail a lot of times, and my flesh can get the best of me because I am human like the rest of us. But living in victory, you must learn. We must learn how to keep our flesh under subjection so we can walk in the Spirit. Also, fasting is based upon needs. 
If you have a need you've prayed about, you feel like you can't get through, I would recommend it's time to go on a fast. A lot of this information is based upon a book that I would encourage everybody to read. It's a book called Fast Forward by Brother Josh Herring. And there's two rules that he, that he has with fasting on every fast. Number one is always get permission from your pastor. Why would you get permission from your pastor? You're about to go into the spirit world, and you need to be covered by your man of God so those spirits can't just whip you like they want to. If he covers you, you're good to go on a fast. If not, he knows something you don't. Number two is prior consecration should always be done before you want to go on a fast. If you've never fasted two hours, please don't ask to go 40 days. That would he gave God gave you a brain for a reason. You have to use wisdom. Try to skip some meals and build your way up. Establish daily prayer. Get rid of entertainment so you're not distracted by the voices of the world. Fasting literally means abstaining from food. If you fasted Pepsi and switched to diet Pepsi, that's not fasting. You're a warrior, though. Fasting literally means you're not putting food down your throat to get an answer from God. There's a popular thing that a lot of people want to call a fast, but I believe it's more of a sacrifice. We call it a media fast, but it's really a sacrifice to get your mind away from the things of the world. It's a great thing to do if you want to get a deeper connection to the spirit world. It will get you out of the virtual world and put you in the supernatural world. There are several examples of fasting in the Bible. I won't give scripture, but Moses fasted 40 days. David fasted. E Elijah fasted. Ezra fasted. Esther fasted three days with no food and no water for the salvation of our people. That girl's tough. That's probably one of the hardest fasts to do in the Bible. I've heard stories of people, they said they fasted 40 days, and they fasted three days with no food and no water, and they said the three days with no food and no water is a lot harder. I've done two and a half days of no food and no water. That's tough. But Darius fasted for the safety of Daniel. Daniel fasted 21 days for his nation. Paul fasted three days, no food, no water. They fasted in the book of Acts. Fasting is still prevalent in these days we are living in. If you want an answer from God and it doesn't seem like you can get through to heaven, it's time to go on a fast and get something from God. Here's some reasons you should fast. A family member isn't saved. A family member is dying. You want revival in your church. You want to see a harvest in our city. Fasting for the needs of your pastor and pastor's wife. Fasting for the leaders in your church. You may need direction. You can fast for spiritual authority over some things. And you can fast to be used in the gifts of the Spirit. And you can fast to be more sensitive to the Holy Ghost. There's a lot of different reasons to go on a fast. Just to remember, this is probably one of the hardest ways to get an answer from God, but it's also one of the most effective ways. If you would, would you stand with me? I'm going to talk about the last point, daily prayer. With every new level or dimension you step into, all of these elements must increase. Your prayer should increase. Your fasting should increase. The level of worship should increase. And your level of submission to spiritual authority should increase. I can't stress this point enough. If you're going to walk in victory every day, you must have a consistent prayer life. I don't mean this rude, but five minutes with the Lord is not going to give you victory every day. I don't even think 15 minutes would give you victory every day. I believe in order to walk in victory every day, I think you got to at least pray an hour a day. The Lord even got on to his disciples because they couldn't pray for an hour. He said, can you not watch and pray for an hour? And he was in the garden of Gethsemane. I a lot of old timers even believed it, that if you didn't pray an hour a day, you weren't saved. I can honestly say I agree with them. We're a lot smarter than this previous generation, but we are definitely not as consecrated as the last generation. If we are going to measure up to the biblical standards, we are going to have to become a generation. And we're going to have to know how to pray and touch heaven. We have powerful anointed singing, 
but we have become a generation that doesn't pray very much anymore. And we got to connect to the supernatural world. I've got notes I'd be happy to share with you about the tabernacle prayer. If you want to pray an hour, I guarantee you you'll pray an hour every day praying the tabernacle because there's so much. It's kingdom praying. Not just praying about yourself, but you're praying about the things of all around the world. I heard something that revolutionized my prayer life. Pastor Joe Campatella made a statement on a podcast. He said, we've got to start looking for the entrance that day in prayer. He said, a lot of people are looking for the exit as soon as they start praying. Rather than looking for an exit, we must look for an entrance that day. They, they said that in the, in the Old Testament, the veil was 30 feet long and approximately 8 to 10 inches thick. When the high priest would go, there was, it was never really given how he, how he went into the holiest of holies. He had to wait and linger for the timing and the visitation of God to be carried into the holiest of holies. I believe tonight that your prayer life doesn't have to be boring anymore. If prayer is boring, it's probably because you're in the outer court and you got a lot of flesh that needs to be crucified. The less flesh you have, the easier it is to flow in prayer. I would say the more time you spend at the altar, the more, the more flesh burns out of your spirit. The more God reveals to you in your life and the weight and sin in your world doesn't have to be there. I would say tonight, let's begin to tap into the spirit. Let's come to this altar and let's pray. Let's pray that God would use us. Pray that God would take us to deeper dimensions in prayer because prayer is a substance that we have to have if we're going to touch the kingdom. If, you, if the singers would start singing, Hallelujah, Jesus. Tonight, oh God, we come before you. Hallelujah, tonight. God, I pray that you would release the spirit of prayer into this place tonight. Tonight, oh God, we want to touch your throne. God, we want to come before you boldly, before your throne of grace and mercy. Healing in his name, victory, power in the same. We've got a right to praise and worship on a shame. There's deliverance, deliverance in Jesus' name. I'm gonna shout for joy because he set me free. Sing and dance, he delivered me. Sing my praise to the King of Kings. There's deliverance, deliverance in Jesus' name. I'm gonna shout for joy because he set me free. Sing and dance, he delivered me. Sing my praise to the King of Kings. There's deliverance, deliverance in Jesus' name. There's deliverance, healing in His name, victory, power in the same, there's deliverance, healing in His name, victory, power in the same, we've got a right to praise and worship on a shame. There's deliverance, deliverance in Jesus' name. For joy, cause he set me free. Sing and dance, he delivered me. Sing my praise to the King of Kings. There's deliverance, deliverance in Jesus' name. I'm gonna shout for joy, cause he set me free. Sing and dance, he delivered me. Sing my praise to the King of Kings. There's deliverance. Deliverance in Jesus' name. There's deliverance, healing in His name, victory, power in the same as deliverance, healing in His name, victory, power in the same. We've got a right to praise and worship on a shame. There's deliverance, deliverance in Jesus' name. Let's see.
name I'm gonna shout for joy cause you set me free Sing and dance he delivered me Sing my praise to the Would you king join somebody of peace right now? Would you pray for them? Deliverance Special in Jesus' Special needs name. may be represented in this house tonight, God. I'm gonna shout for a joy cause he they set me in. free. Sing and dance, he delivered me. me. God, before they Sing step my praise place. to the King of Kings. I pray God for individuals. Deliverance in the Jesus' trip tonight name. That need your touch, God. I pray over their mind. I pray over their heart. I pray over their spirit. Oh, would you lift your voice for just a moment? Pray for them, God. You know what they're walking through. You know the difficulties that they've stepped into this place we have tonight. I pray, God, that you would lead them forth in victory tonight. Oh, can we clap our hands and love the Lord together right now? God, I love you. God, I love you and I bless you tonight. Praise the wonderful name of the Lord. Praise the wonderful name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And you're glad to be in God's house tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Privileged, privileged to be in God's house. Thankful for Robert being baptized. Thankful for Derek being baptized the other night. Excited about that idea. Hallelujah. Got some more upcoming. Matter of fact, you want to get baptized. You haven't been baptized in the all-saving name of Jesus. Tonight can be your night. We got water ready. We got preachers that are ready. Matter of fact, it don't have to be tonight. Be tonight, later, it could be tomorrow, be anytime. You just let us know and we will make sure that that's taken care of. Brother Ryan's coming right now. Got some quick announcements and prayer requests that we're going to take care of before we get out of here tonight. God bless you, Brother Ryan. A few needs we need to take before God in prayer tonight. We need to remember our life recovery program. Been seeing wonderful things. Got the teach last night and talk to them for a little while and I just enjoyed carrying on conversation. God is doing wonderful things through our life recovery program so please keep remembering that and everyone in that program. Let's also keep remembering Ken Park and let's keep remembering the Kirk family in this time. Also remember our city and our nation. Bishop and Sister White, Pastor and First Lady Lambert and continued revival. And I know I said it earlier but this is not just the first service it's not just the second service where we're going to see people being baptized, but this is going to be a continuous thing where I believe we're going to see service after service of people getting baptized and receiving the Holy Ghost. And all of the requests in this house by the lifting of hands. If you have a special need in your body, unspoken, family member that's backslidden, anything like that, why don't we make those known to God? And let's set our other hand right now, and let's pray to him right now. Jesus, we're so thankful, God, to be in your house. Thankful, Lord, that you've given us a way to communicate with you, a way to bring needs to you, Jesus. We're thankful, God, that you've given us this means by prayer, Lord Jesus. We're so thankful, God, that there is power in your name, Jesus. And we speak that name. We speak the only saving name of Jesus over each and every single need. We ask you, Lord, let virtue begin to flow where they're at. Let your power and strength, God, go to those who need it, Lord. Let hope go to those who need it. God, and peace go to those who need it, Lord. In all things, we're going to give you praise. We give you praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. A few announcements, and I'll go through these quickly. Uh, please remember that this weekend, this Friday and Saturday, is Mississippi District Men's Conference. And if you have not let Brother Collins know that you are going, please let him know by tonight. Please let him know before you leave. Anniversary services this weekend at New Life in Muscle Shoals. That will start up Friday at 7.30, and you will be blessed. We appreciate Brother and Sister Dalton and their entire family so much, and we want to go and support them and that church. And I believe it's Brother, is it Brother Kanata that's going to be there this Friday? Brother Kanata will be there, and that will be a fantastic service. Also, this Saturday at 2 p.m., uh, where's Abel? He is right there. Brother Sam is holding Abel Lee Lowersdorf, and he has his one-year birthday party this Saturday. Telling you, time is flying by way too fast with all these kids growing up before we know it. Maddox is going to be a year old before we know it. Emerson's going to be a year old, and it's just, it's going by way too fast. I'll just leave it at that. But also remember, next Friday night is our men's service here, and we're looking forward to having Bishop White with us. And again, for any any anybody here, any man here that is coming to that service, please register. There is a free registration. We just need you to go to the link that is on the on the flyer if you need that go to the facebook page let brother collins know if you need that 
um, Brother Jesse did a great job making that flyer. If you need that, he can send that to you. Get with one of them, let them know, because the registration is free, but so we just need to know how many people are coming for the meal. Also as well, and I saved this one for last, the Ugly Suit Fundraiser. We, I know what we set the goal is if we beat the amount that we got last year through the Ugly Suit Fundraiser, then whoever wins has to wear it three services in a row. And actually that idea came from Brother Derek here. And so I, when he told me that idea, I loved it so much. I was, uh, I've got to do that. And, uh, but we're about a, almost, almost a third of the way there. So please give. And then we also set the goal that if we raise $1,500 overall through this and all the other fundraisers, that I will eat a pineapple and mayonnaise sandwich and wash it down with whatever you want to call the concoction that the kids make in the refrigerator. They pull out the Tabasco, the ketchup, the mayonnaise, everything, the pickles. Wash it down with that. And I promise we're going to do it outside. <laughs> but we're about half of the way to that goal. Amen. So we want to give to move the mission. We want to give and make sure that the missionaries are fully funded, make sure that Tupelo Children's Mansion gets everything that they need. Same thing with Lighthouse Ranch for Boys. This is going towards a wonderful cause, so please give. Other than that, invite someone to be with us on Sunday. Fellowship as long as you like. Shake hands. Let someone know how excited you were to see them, and you can be dismissed in Jesus' name.